Hi, this is Rick for EDU Mobile, and welcome to this overview discussion about Android Lollipop. First of all, what is Lollipop, and then what is new in Lollipop? Well, Lollipop is Android API Level 21, or also known as Android Version 5.0, and it's codenamed Lollipop. This brings the Android system to new devices, including TVs and cars with Android TV and some car APIs. Uh, so in, in addition to uh, phones and tablets and wearables, we now have the capability of bringing Android to TVs and cars. It updates many features, including the user interface and some notification changes, uh, media, camera, and audio and video, 3D graphics, storage system, a wireless connectivity, and many other uh, updates are included within the Lollipop system itself. So some of the changes include to the user interface, a new design style called Material. And this gives users a more active experience. Uh, they, there are now shadows on views and we can control the Z level uh, views, the apparent height of a view against the activity upon which they're sitting. Uh, there are animations now with drawables and transitions there. We can also use XML vector graphics in drawables. There are activity transition effects. Uh, UI controls can be customized. So there is a more active user experience in the material design style. Some other things with the user interface. There is more control over activities and documents in the Recents screen. Web views now implement the Chromium M37 browser which adds some security and stability, fixes some bugs, and also allows web views to access device hardware like the camera and the microphone. We can also uh, capture screens and share them with other users on other devices uh, in 5.0. Some changes to notifications include the ability to present notifications from a lock screen, which is uh, useful uh, when, for example, we want an activity to present a notification while the user screen is locked. There's also some more intelligent sorting and classification of notifications. For instance, we can allow them to be flagged by category or priority or even the person that should be receiving the notifications. And we can have a list of people that should receive those notifications or not. In graphics, of course, Android now supports OpenGL ES 3.1 from Kronos. Uh, there is also, with along with this 3.1 support, there's a new extension pack uh, released by Google for Android for OpenGL ES, and it includes a bunch of stuff, and I'll only mention three things. There is guaranteed fragment shader support. In OpenGL ES 3.1, in standard, uh, this is optional. Uh, the extension pack guarantees fragment shader support. There are geometry shaders, and there is also tessellation or tiling of images uh, on a 3D graphics screen. As far as media, we can now detect cameras and camera features uh, that are available on a device and choose among those cameras based on their features programmatically. There's also support for fine-grained photo capture and better control over image processing. As far as audio and video go, uh, the playback of those, there are two new classes, Media Session and Media Controller, and these give us better control over playback of media, as well as easier control over browsing of media from your applications. As far as storage goes, apps, this is a big one here for me, apps and or users can now select an entire directory instead of getting access to each uh, element inside a directory, we can now select an entire directory and flag it for access and then be able to access all of its content. Also, we can create, rename, and delete documents anywhere in a directory subtree once we flagged it for access. Networking brings three big changes. Apps can now dynamically scan and select among available networks. This is useful for an application that needs to use some sort of specialized connection uh, or IP port or something like that. 
Devices also, as far as Bluetooth, can now function as a peripheral, a Bluetooth LE peripheral, as well as their pre-existing functionality. And there are also expanded capabilities for near-field communication. Lollipop puts a big emphasis on extending the battery life for applications that use the battery extensively. So developers now have access to battery information, uh, including the ability to go in through the Android debug bridge and look at a device's battery history and other data uh, regarding the battery. And there's a lot more. Uh, I kind of wrap the rest of the stuff here in this slide. There's better supports for apps that run within a corporate or educational environment. There's the ability to render a PDF as a bitmap uh, for later printing. We now have access to in-app access to the usage history for an application, so we can tell how the user is using our application. We also have additional support for testing frameworks and accessibility. And uh, among other features, we now have additional required feature declarations in the manifest so that we can make sure that users are not attempting to use our app on a device that doesn't have hardware or features that won't work with our application. Thank you very much.